went to college, started studied marketing. Um, four years, didn't graduate though. Dad had some health problems, so I started taking over the family company. I will start working. My mom's in them doing and that's the that's marble cool. tables and. Well, we were doing a lot more than that time. At that time, we had like um, what we call the alcohol boom era in China, where you can import, export wine, champagne, stuff like that, and it would just fly off the shelf. Wow. So we used to do that for a bit, like food, frozen food, and sell the bakeries and restaurants or whatever. We did that for a while. I was really passionate about food too. So during college, I opened up a little restaurant. It was just from you know my mom and her friends, and you know me and my friends. We have a little place to hang out, mm -hmm. and I learned how to cook from my half brother on my dad's side, who's actually a chef, and he's been around like the world learning how to cook, yeah, he, and he taught me the basics. I messed around the kitchen. Like at 13, I remember I can cook a whole Thanksgiving meal. Like the turkey, the casserole, the, the stuff and all that. I still don't know how to do anything like that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, I have to go and you know, cook the show and watch well, see, you. <laughs> that's the thing though, but like when you like to eat and you in China and you can't find that, you gotta learn how to make it. No doubt. Yeah. So when did you decide to venture on into, um, or did you venture on, or did you, do you still control so, your parents' business? Yeah, I still control it. Um, Dad passed away two Sorry years ago. Sorry to hear that. Yeah. I mean, that's what it is, but so after that, I was doing marketing for social media at the time, for like the... Chinese version of TikTok and helping people with their food channels, like as a consultant. You know, if they wanted to do this recipe, I hook them up, teach them how to do it, make sure it looks good, boom. And then after that, you do that for a while. I still do the import export on some things. Mm -hmm. and then people came to me as like a, kind of like a middleman for them, basically, whatever they need to find. So it was like, hey, yo, Jeff, do you know where I can do this and this and this? I was like, yo, yeah, talk to that guy. He knows this and this and this. Like, yo, you know where I can get like a cheap busted down or old or whatever, second hand car or something like that? Like, yeah, go talk to my man over here and stuff like that. I was that guy for a while. No, I'm okay. sure. <laughs> you know, so. But at that time, it kind of gets tiring, you know? Because you, you don't feel like you're doing something stable. You can't be the middleman for life. And it's hard to be the middleman. Especially when you need to make sure that both sides are happy and make sure that you maintain what you're going to get. Because they could just link up and just go, hey, screw you. Uh, that's why you should not always know who you're dealing with when it comes to that. Exactly. But being the middleman, um, it keeps you somewhat in a safe place um, because you can make the deals without having to make the investment, you know what I'm saying? And then you have the connections to both parties and both parties kind of need you, you know? Right, but it's not long term, you know what I mean? Because once you introduce them, I'm sure you get you cut the first few times, but long term, if they keep doing it, why they need you? That's why you maybe make contract, you know? Contracts can be easily broken. Can be broken. You know what I'm saying? Like you're right. You're right. I mean, I could suffer the same thing in my business. Was in my business of supplying people with security. They could try to, you know, whether it's a store, whether it's a person, whether it's, right. you know. But that it's more temporary, believe it or not, than what I'm doing because. If they engage in that, they're both shady, you know what I'm saying? No, exactly. And, and, and they exactly. have no moral code. Exactly. And those without the moral code, actually, they think it becomes more temporary than 
Exactly. You know, what I'm what I'm doing. Exactly. You're always gonna be the guy that they're gonna come back to at the end, but at the end of the day, do I still wanna mess with you though? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, me personally, absolutely not. I move on. You know? Right, exactly. Yeah. And you know, like I believe that character, your character mm -hmm. take you farther than your talent in certain times, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, sure, you're going to have these shady people, you're going to have these weird people around you, but then you really know, like, I, I know this guy's not going to, like, this guy's not going to mess with me, this guy's not going to, we could do long-term business. There was only a couple long-term things that I got in motion and just eat off that. And then I started realizing, okay, well, I need to start investing some of that money in something that I want to do and I can control myself. And that's when I started to get into the jewelry game. Okay. Yeah. <laughs>